7 millimeter OT8 versus 308. We're going to be talking about some long range cartridges today that are incredibly popular in the hunting community. Let's get to it. Hello everyone, this is Dave Trillo and you're listening to the Ammunition Guide podcast brought to you by none other than Ammo.com. Now, Chris, today we're going to compare yet another cartridge to the hollow 308 win. But this one, I got to confess, you can fit what I know about the 7mm 08 Remington into a thimble. It's not one I've ever fired. It's not ammo we sell a lot of. But I do understand it gives the cartridge it's based on a real run for its money. It really does, Dave, and I have to admit, I'm kind of in the same boat with you on this one. Uh, I am not familiar with the 7mm-08 at all, uh, for the most part, other than you know the research we did in the article that we wrote for this, uh, both of which you can check down in the description. Of course, for all of you who are watching today, make sure you click on that link down there in the pinned comment and right at the top of the description, get on the email list and uh, get yourself a $20 off coupon just courtesy for watching the video today. I really appreciate all of our viewers. But uh, yeah, the 7 millimeter OT-8 is, it's just the wildcatter's dream. And I, I gotta tell you, I think that, uh, you know, Remington, the, the originator of the 7 millimeter OT-8, really just loves wildcat cartridges because this is not the first one that they've made mainstream. Yeah, for our listeners who are in the dark, wildcatter is, is a, a fiendish handloader who makes his own cartridges. Like me, right? Do you wildcat? Have you originated anything? I haven't yet. We haven't made the 300 wallet yet, but we're working on it. It's still in production. That's cool. Yeah, I'm working on the uh, 7 millimeter Trillo, but okay. it's, yeah, it's hard to fit that many uh, party poppers into a 22 <laughs> case. <laughs> But so, yeah, it's it's one of those cartridges that it's like, you know, it's like the 22250 or the 6 Remington. It, it came from something else. And this one uh, comes straight from the 308. They basically took the 308, they necked it down to take a 7 millimeter bullet, and voila, there it is. Uh, and that, That's yeah, really all it is. Pretty Same much. Powder everything else well i mean you know powders can always change uh but i mean the, the big the big difference between the two of them is just the bullet size that they fire their case capacity is virtually the same so this is like the ultimate you know, seven millimeter versus 30 cal debate whether one of these cartridges noticeably shines brighter than the other yeah absolutely and we kind of saw this work its way out back in the spanish-american war right when we had the the spanish mauser uh the famous uh you know rifle that was you know the the building block or you know of course springfield would never admit this but it it sure looks a lot like a 1903 springfield if you ask me uh and uh you know it was basically that versus the 3040 crag Right back in the Spanish-American War, and the Mauser was the superior design. Uh, but you know, as far as bullets are concerned, it, it definitely is the you know the competition between seven millimeter and you know seven six two or three oh eight. I know either one is perfectly viable. I think even Jeff Cooper, our favorite guy, oh yeah, said that the seven millimeter oh eight is is good for a scout rifle. I mean, if it has his approval, it can't have too many black eyes. Oh, definitely. I mean, there's the seven millimeter OT eight is arguably has some, you know, a distinct advantages over the 308 that you wouldn't necessarily expect. And probably the, the one that most people would look at that you feel the most when you're shooting it is recoil. Now, uh, the seven millimeter OT eight technically has, and this is a big number, 20% less recoil. Now, I know that that sounds like a really big number, but when you're shooting something like this, it really isn't a huge amount. But I will say that, you know, people who maybe are recoil sensitive might want to take a look at 7mm OT8. Is that solely from uh, its lighter bullet weight? Is it comparable to the 308 in terms of muzzle velocity? Yeah, actually, they're very close uh, in terms of, of muzzle velocity. The 7mm OT8 is going to be a little bit higher. Uh, but yes, it is mostly because the bullet weight, because the bullets will be lighter. It's, you know, you I know what everybody's thinking right now. Back in high school physics, you're like, I'll never use this in the real world. We're using it right now. Uh, yeah. You know, it, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So the heavier the bullet, the bigger the powder charge, the more force is going to be pushed back onto that shoulder, uh, you know, when you're cracking one of those rounds off. And if you're shooting lighter bullets, typically you're going to have a little less recoil. Yeah, yeah, I know uh, 
bullets for the for the seven millimeter 08 they kind of range between 120 and 160 just based on what i've seen what products we've offered the hunters and i think your preferred load for the 308 is the 175 did you say yeah that's my favorite uh you know but i know that most people shoot between you know like the 150 and the 168 that's that's the more popular range uh the 175 is more of a long range thing and i just like that really high ballistic coefficient that's just me uh but you know perfectly serviceable cartridge with a lighter bullet weight and i think one of the things that the 308 offers is a very wide range of bullet you know, weights that you can have uh, that let you hunt multiple, uh, you know, different targets. So these are theoretically two cartridges that could have identical bullet weights and differ only in the diameter of their, their bullets. Yeah, there's absolutely some crossover in bullet weights where you could be shooting the exact same, uh, you know, style of bullet. Now, of course, the diameter is going to be different, like you said, but the weight would be the same. Uh, so there's definitely a lot of crossover in that area. Uh, and it, it creates kind of a bit of a, a gray zone between the two saying which is better. And I think it really comes down to trajectory uh, is one of the things that it really comes down to. And since it's shooting a lighter bullet at a higher muzzle velocity, the, the seven millimeter actually has the better uh, long range trajectory. Oh, flatter. Mm -hmm. That's not taking into account the uh, the advantages of a heavier bullet. It's inertia downrange, of course. Absolutely. I mean, there's a give and take. Uh, obviously, when you're shooting a lighter bullet like that, uh, you know, you'll have deeper penetration, but, you know, maybe a little bit less momentum. Uh, you know, in inertia, things along those lines. Uh, but it is like at about 700 yards, it's about a foot difference uh, between the two. So if you're a long range shooter and you need something that has a flatter trajectory, the, the seven millimeter 08 is technically better. So would it be a better choice for shooting on the plains or in the Rockies? I think so. Uh, you know, myself personally, if, if I needed to take a really long shot, it's going to be more forgiving. Uh, but Man, you can't go wrong with a 30 caliber bullet. I mean, especially on something like that at long range. You know, honestly, if I was really going to go out long range, I'd probably go with the 300 Win Mag. That's, you know, just me. You get the best of both worlds, more recoil, but you get that 30 caliber bullet and that flat trajectory. But if you're constricted, right, and you're like, I can only have a 308 or 7 millimeter odd 8, and you're like, well, I'm going to be doing prairie dog hunting and I want to shoot mountain goats, then yeah, the 7 millimeter is going to be the better choice. Yeah, it's, see, it's one of those rare crossover rounds that you can theoretically use on moose, but people love to use on woodchucks. It really has a lot of versatility, and I think that's one of the draws that the 7mm offers. I know that the 308 offers a lot of versatility as well in bullet weight, but, you know, if you really want that, um, you know, that, that trajectory, you, you plan on shooting long range and you have an ability to practice at that range, then, you know, uh, that's something that the discerning long range marksman might want to consider. Uh, and it does have a lot of crossover in the different types of animals that you can hunt with it. So it gives you a lot of options. Yeah. My understanding though, uh, the seven millimeter 08, not good for the big bears. No, I wouldn't personally. Would be your first choice for no, a no, definitely not. If we're going into bear country, I'm not taking a seven millimeter as my choice. Uh, and honestly, a, a 30 cal is, in my opinion, still not enough. Uh, I would want something bigger. Uh, I'm I'm happy with like a 4570 uh, or something like that for bear medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, though a 300 Win Mag would do it. I understand even a 30 odd six can do a bear. Oh yeah, under the right circumstances. But maybe even the 30 odd six, which is pretty similar to the 308, shouldn't be your first choice if you're worried about Yogi. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you're looking at doing something, uh, you know, going into bear country or you're going to go Kodiak hunting, don't skimp out on your bullet. Uh, you know, you want something big, you need something hard and something that can penetrate uh, really hard. And so, yeah, the seven millimeter, not my first choice for bear medicine. I definitely prefer a 30 or bigger. I read as a last ditch effort, you can try to stuff your entire arm down a bear's throat, which the bear hates. Um, I want to know frankly, who I, I want to know who tested that theory. Well, um, you know, I, I I say to heck with last ditch efforts. I want to hunt bears this way. I'm going to sneak up on them and, and just ram my whole arm down their throat and make their life miserable. I'll figure out a way to kill it though. Uh, I guess it shouldn't it shouldn't be your first choice. Your first choice for bear hunting to, to 
ram your whole arm down its throat. But, yeah, uh, you know, I, I yeah. just don't think that that's really the way that I want to go. I mean, again, I, I want to know who tested that out to say that it could actually work. Um, but I just kind of worry about that a little bit. I think I'd rather keep the bear at distance. Uh, but hey, you know, if you want to, you know, go full on like alien style and, you know, try and, you know, push your fist through its chest. I mean, who am I to tell you not to? Yeah, that's true. This is America. Exactly. This bears to death uh, however I please. Exactly. No, that, that's the fun part. You have variety, right? It's just like with cartridges. You can pick whatever suits you best. And I think that's really what 7mm odd 8 versus 308 comes down to. You know, you can't. Know it's one yeah. of the most popular choices of metallic silhouette competitions, right? It is, actually. And, you know, there's there's a good reason for it. I mean, you know, you've got the range. You've got the lighter recoil. It's not a huge, you know, you know, difference in recoil, but it's there, uh, and it, it gives you a lot of advantages over the 308 in, you know, some areas. Is it drastically different? Where I'm going to say, like, no, the 308's garbage. You shouldn't take it. This is the pinnacle of, you know, long range cartridges. No, I'm not. And I don't want anybody to run out and be like, oh my gosh, my 308 is inferior because Chris and Dave said so on the ammunition comparison podcast. No, that's not it. If you've got a 308 bolt action or you know an AR-10 or whatever it is and you love hunting with it, dude, you're not undergunned. I promise you, you're going to do just fine. Uh, it's just another option if you're looking for something different. It seems to be, I mean, we got to address the the elephant or the bear in the room i guess yeah, right the seven millimeter 08 is not very popular and yeah. i assume it was it was introduced in the night in 1980 i believe mm -hmm. uh zero this is always important zero military history yeah so that means a lot of veterans had no experience with it of course they were going to prefer their 308s and uh it just means ammo availability is, is not going to quite be the same if you got the tried and true American as apple pie 30 cal 308 instead. Oh, absolutely. Good luck finding surplus 7mm 8 brass because it doesn't exist. Uh, you know, like you said, Dave, no military has picked this up. So that definitely limits the amount of materials that you can get for it if you're a hand loader like myself. Now, you could, of course, reform 308 brass, which is always an option, uh, you know, if you're short on brass, but I mean, that's a lot more labor intensive. Uh, it's not something that I'm too familiar with. I prefer just to buy the right brass to start with and then just reform it. But that's me. Some people enjoy the process and you know what, if that's you, you go for it. Uh, but I do think that you're definitely limited on your options as far as ammunition is concerned, just because of lo the longevity of the 308, how long it's been here, it's rich military history, you know, you, and just the crossover with other 30 caliber bullets. You know, if you reload for 308, you can reload for 30 out six, 300 Win Mag, 300 Blackout, all of those cool 30 caliber cartridges. And if you're reloading seven millimeter, well, you, you've kind of got like the seven millimeter Mauser and a couple others, and that's about it. Yeah, nothing really comes to mind. I mean, the 270 Weatherby Magnum, mm -hmm. not exactly. Uh very popular i guess you could load the 6.8 western which is one of the most exciting new rounds to come out to the market yeah that is a really cool one we'll have to see if we can get that one on the podcast here soon that would be fun to talk about yeah it might be a little niche still but you know, never know definitely um so we don't like to say don't buy a rifle but it feels like this one might be the seven millimeter 08 might just be one you'd want in addition to a 308 if you were really gung-ho about seeing everything the firearm world has to offer yeah i kind of have to agree with you on that one dave it it's like if you're going to say i need one rifle to do it all i'm picking the 308 out of the two because you have that wide variety of you know bullet weights that you can choose from and you have a lot of ammo availability which is always important when you're getting a rifle you want to be able to buy bullets for it that's important you can always get those here at ammo.com but i'll tell you we've got a wider selection of 308 than we do of seven millimeter out eight because the 308 is just more popular now that being yes. that being said you know if you have a specific reason that you're looking for a seven millimeter out eight. Maybe you want that trajectory because you're planning on shooting longer ranges. Maybe you want that lower recoil. Then, you know, it definitely does give you those advantages and it can definitely give you an edge up if you're looking for, you know, 
to make that long range shot, it definitely has those advantages over the 308. Got to point out, I mean, to my knowledge, you you can get uh, AR-10 like seven millimeter 08 rifle. Oh yeah, I'm pretty confident that they uh, you know they make barrels for that and things like that. Be I don't think. No, actually, I know because the the base is exactly the same as a 308. You just need a barrel change. You need a seven millimeter barrel, and that would be about it. So you're really uh, not limited to just hunting. You could theoretically have any any AR-10 like rifle chambered for this this unusual 1980 cartridge. Yeah, you could. Uh, you know, if that's your bag, uh, and you know you want to rock that, by all means, go for it. Uh, it's definitely going to be something different. I'll give you that much. I, I can't say that I've seen a whole lot of 7 millimeter ot 8 AR-10s running around on the uh, the local gun boards, but, you know, it's definitely an option. The overall length is exactly the same on both cartridges, so it should have no problem fitting into the AR-10 mag. And like I said, the base is the same, so you wouldn't even need to change the bolt, uh, which is one thing that can be a pain when you're doing an AR conversion. So, you know, it definitely has that utility if you want to do it. Do you think the seven millimeter A? Well, I can't say so many numbers at once. It's a Do lot. Do you think isn't it? the seven millimeter O eight would be nearly as popular, which isn't to suggest it's very popular, if there were so many countries where civilians weren't barred from from having military firearms, military cartridges? Because I'm just thinking about in Europe where you wouldn't be allowed to have a three out eight because yeah. the uh, you know, the army would have it, but exactly. this seems like a good way to kind of skirt those uh, those freedom-hating anti-gunners over in Europe's bands. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's definitely one of the reasons that some of these cartridges exist, like Dave was saying, because they're not allowed to own the same cartridges in the military. Go to a let's put it that way. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, it definitely is a way to skirt around that, and I do know that uh, it is a bit more popular in Europe than it is here, but still... Uh, I think, yeah, honestly, I don't think it really gives you all that many advantages over the 308. And it, it, like you said, it's more of a niche uh, cartridge, in my opinion, that uh, you really need to have a reason to own it. I never reshaped the case. Is, is it that nightmarishly hard to resize 308 for 7 mil? No, it's not that bad. You need to Typically, you'd need to do a little bit of trimming. Uh, and then you'd have to resize the case neck. It's not that difficult. It just takes a little bit of work. Uh, and, you know, some hand loaders don't like to do the extra work. And I get that. And then, of course, your head stamp's going to be different. So if you, your head stamp, if you looked at it before on the bottom of a case, will say what it is. So if I take a 308 case, it's going to say 308 win on the bottom. Well, if you resize that case, it's still going to have that head stamp on there. And you could hypothetically get it mixed in with your 308 brass. So if you do do resizing like that, you gotta be really careful to make sure that you segregate your gra your brass so that you don't get things mixed up and you don't re hand load the wrong brass with the wrong cartridge. Do you have to actually heat up the case at any point when you're resizing it? I'm just asking, cause it's all kinda, I don't hand load. I'm not, oh, of course, I'm of not course. too into it. Do you gotta take a torch of that thing to soften it up a little or is it purely mechanical? It's all mechanical. What you have to do with bottleneck cases like we the 7 millimeter Audi and 308 is you have to lubricate the cases. Uh, that otherwise, they'll get stuck in the resizing die. Now, straight wall cases like pistol cases, like uh, 45 ACP, 9 millimeter, stuff like that, you don't have to lubricate them, which is a lot easier, let me tell you. But yeah, you don't have to heat it up. Uh, you don't have to take a torch to it. Uh, I can tell you torches and gunpowder do not mix. Uh, so it is a good thing you don't need to do that. Yeah, you don't smoke big cigars when you're hand loading? Typically not. No, I'm definitely not smoking a stogie while I've got the reloading press going. I can promise you that. But Chris, he looks so cool. It would look pretty awesome, not going to lie. Uh, you know, I'd probably look like the sergeant from Aliens. Uh, one of my favorite, you know, movies of all time, you know, rocking it out in the reloading room with the big stogie and out of the corner of my mouth. But uh, sadly, no safety first. I've decided that, you know, making sure I've got, you know, all 10 fingers and my eyebrows intact is a little bit more important than looking cool. I uh, just reminded me a kid from my neighborhood when I was growing up, <clears throat> he was making a pipe bomb to blow up a beaver dam. Ah, okay. I, I grew up in kind of a rural area. No one explained to this dude, uh, 
you know, that cigarettes can light things on fire. Mm. And, and now his wife's opening his ketchup bottles for him, I'm sure. Yeah, guys, be careful with that stuff. Uh, you know, always make sure that you're careful when you're hand loading, uh, that you're keeping your, you know, your open flames and things like that away from your powder sources. Or uh, you might have the same problem as uh, that guy that Dave knew. I feel like these are the insightful tips that people tune into our podcast for. I mean, if you've watched the video this long, you deserve to get some insider information. And this is definitely what you've tuned in for, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Joe Rogan ain't going to tell you this on his <laughs> podcast. No, no. He's got way too many warning labels on there now. There, This is a no warning label podcast right here. Mm-hmm. Keep your your flames away from your explosives hot tip ammo.com absolutely guys this is the quality content you signed up for and let me tell you we are delivering it to you in spades today all right so uh take away you want a little bit better accuracy than the 308 try out the 7 mil 08 i think so yeah I, I think the reduced recoil is really in my opinion the big draw for seven millimeter at eight it's not a huge difference you know experienced shooters are probably not going to be able to feel too much of a difference in that i understand it sounds big when you're like oh my gosh it's 20 percent but that really only comes down to about four to five foot pounds of recoil energy which isn't a whole lot in the grand scheme of things furthermore when you're hunting with it you're probably going to be taking like one shot so you're not spending the whole day at the range but that being said like you mentioned flatter trajectory lighter recoil typically re, you know goes hand in hand with a little bit better accuracy so the seven millimeter odd eight has that going for it the question is is it really worth the investment is it worth the you know the slightly more expensive ammo cost and harder to find ammo than the 308 uh, or is it just better to go with something a little bit cheaper easier to find and that you can practice with more for me personally, I, I always lean towards more practice. There's the rub. Mm -hmm. And we, it should be pointed out that promising low recoil is extremely hard to do with any degree of honesty. Oh, yeah. We, could, we can measure objective recoil energy just with muzzle velocity, bullet weight, propellant weight, and rifle weight. Mm -hmm. But what you actually experience is subjective. There's just no way to measure that. And furthermore, uh, rifle weights, I mean, they vary so much that... Oh, yeah. You could theoretically just tape a two pound dumbbell to your rifle and cancel out a lot of, uh, you know, people might point and laugh at you at the range, but they were going to do that anyway. Fair enough. I, I haven't seen a Picatinny rail adapter for a two pound weight yet, but if that comes around, we'll definitely have to experiment with that. But you're right. Uh, rifle weight does play a big role in it. I would say typically these, uh, you know, these two cartridges are going to be fairly similar as far as rifle weight is concerned, because it's going to be that same, you know, that short action. Uh, that you know we know and love and most manufacturers offer seven millimeter ot eight now it's just not as popular an offering as a 308 and so you're going to have more rifle options more ammo options for 308 if that's what you go with i'm sold on the 308 i'm sticking with it you and me both buddy uh you know it, it's still going to be my preferred 30 caliber uh i just love the the history that it has with it and you can't go wrong with more ammo availability that's always my motto so you know guys if you haven't done so please make sure you click like and subscribe down below get all of our new ammo comparison podcasts here on the ammo.com youtube channel dave thanks for coming out i really appreciate it as always forget about it all right, we'll see you on the next one, guys.